Hi, this is Joe Medosh with Measure Quick, not Jim Bergman. I am here to help you get all of your field piece probes into the Measure Quick app so you can start using them right now. Besides making sure you have all of the necessary probes and electrical meter, make sure you don't have extra probes or meters in the room because if you're doing this as a group exercise with a bunch of technicians, that is a disaster. You'll all be able to see each other's probes and the numbers will become confounding. So just do this either at your home or away from others so that you can actually see the probes you want to put into Measure Quick. Okay, we're going to talk about the required probes you need to use Measure Quick in its full capacity. There are nine probes required, and then there is the electrical meter, which isn't exactly required for using Measure Quick to get the vital score, but there are other places where we either encourage it or it actually is required. As you can see before me, I have all of the kits here. We're going to do a quick unboxing and unwrapping of these. Let's start with over here. This is the main kit that usually people buy and they realize they need additional ones. So it comes with two clamps, uh, two refrigerant uh, pressures, uh, two psychrometers. You need additional manometers. You need an additional psychrometer for outdoor air temperature. Together that makes three. There's also an additional clamp that if you're going to do heat pumps in heating mode, you'd need the additional clamp for that. But in general, we only use it for that purposes. So there are three clamps total. Um, and then there's also an electrical meter. And this is actually the smaller 480 by field piece. You can also get the 680. Well, let's start by unboxing the, the bigger box. It kind of feels like Christmas here. So we can actually kind of dig into what's in this container. And uh, we'll find out that uh, all of these probes, um, minus the electrical meter, will all fit into this nice little bag that it comes with. So it's a well-designed setup. So they knew that you'd be uh, getting additional tools. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unbox these. Clearly, this is not real time anymore, but my goal is to kind of give you a quick overview about what's here. So uh, the manometers do come with some nice static pressure probes. So most of those out, and there's some additional accessories in each one of these boxes that I'm really not going to go into for right now to do other types of testing. But I'm getting all of my probes out and all of the batteries available. Um, we're all going to do those step one step at a time. So there's my third psychrometer that we would use. I'm not going to be using this pipe clamp right now, so I'm going to just set it aside. All right, but we'll go back to rapid unboxing of the electrical meter and everything else. So some great probes in the electrical meter container that Fieldpiece put together. I like the clips. I like the ability to switch them out kind of rapidly. So I've got everything I needed. I got all of my batteries set up, ready to go. It's important to you know that that number on the bottom is directly connected to the actual device itself. If you swap these covers by accident, you will have a mess on your hand. So just do one set of batteries at a time. Also notice as many of them have dip switches that you could actually turn a certain way or not as to what you're trying to measure. They don't really work with Measure Quick. We don't care about that. We're going to map each one of these directly. So let's go one at a time. Let's take each one of these covers off. Let's put their batteries in. Do not mix up the backs because it will mess you up for quite a while. Okay, so we're putting all the batteries in, all of the probes. I do not need to turn them on just yet. We'll just wait till we get Measure Quick up and running. Then we'll turn each one of them on and make sure that they are mapped and that we actually then label them as to how Measure Quick had mapped them. Okay, we've got them all done. I'm going to rearrange them. We're going to bring in Measure Quick and actually turn it on and show you how to get the probes directly into Measure Quick and make sure they're mapped correctly. Okay, I'm bringing in my iPad. I, you could use a phone, you can use an iPad as long as you have your account and you're logged in. We're gonna get all of our probes directly into Measure Quick. So we're gonna go to our hotkey and we're gonna tap the settings, bottom uh, to the left. And that opens up a variety of things. We've already gone through those if you wanna catch other parts of the video. We are looking for whether or not disable auto mapping is on or off. It should be off, then we'll actually auto map all of our probes. You'll turn a probe on and Measure Quick will auto map it for you as long as that is off. Okay, let's go. All right, we're gonna go back down to our hotkey and select the first one up, which is our toolbox. And inside of it is where we control all of those. The thing that sits most dominant is actually if you wanna buy tools. So don't be deceived by clicking on one of those. So. So you can see in that list though, there's lots of tools. We're gonna to focus now on actually only adding the field piece tools. There'll be other videos to talk about other tools to add. So this is uh, the way we're gonna start. We're gonna turn one probe on, use just one. You don't need all of them on, so just turn one probe on and tap the add button at the bottom left corner. Once that shows up, then you will see that the field piece is third one down and you select field piece 
and then you can see that it's on and now all of the field piece probes are now part of a family and they're now being able to add so you just click on the field piece section at the top there and it'll take you back to where you were so now all of them will be added once we hit this it's saving them and we're going to just go back one more to the next previous screen okay the first thing we're going to do is go to the right side and hit activate that activates the bluetooth tools for all of the field piece products and if you want to deactivate them you can it's a big red button but in general we're going to just press on the pro manager and you can see so far one device one psychrometer has actually been added and on the back I can confirm that the serial number aligns with what measure quick has so since this has already been mapped to the return air I'm gonna write return air on the probe itself so every time I use it this will always be the return air I know where it goes and it's always mapped to measure quick the same way okay so our next is we're gonna just keep moving down the line so we'll bring another one on and uh, we'll see how it maps it so uh, press the green button hold it's on and you'll see that it'll pop up so now I have two psychrometers there's also called hygrometers on the app so it's telling me that this is going to be mapped to supply air so I'm gonna write supply air on this probe so now it's really clear to know where they're gonna go uh, when I put them throughout the house so all right that's done one more is left so anybody want to guess what this one is all right so it's coming on and this will be the third third psychrometer or hygrometer and this is mapped to outdoor air so I will now write outdoor air on that probe and we so far have got all the hygrometers mapped so measure quick is actually automatically mapping these probes that's what it's supposed to do but if you find you need to change one of the mappings or you didn't like the mapping or you have your own special probe for outdoors then you can actually tap on it and it'll uh, bring up all the different options on how these can be mapped what's important is that you make sure that you're picking the return air not return air 2 or supply air 2 those numbers don't actually align to what we're going to do in measure quick one side note about these psychrometers is that they are actually susceptible to adhesives so do not use electrical tape on them and try and keep them away from other tapes including duct tape or electrical tape while in your bag they can actually skew the relative humidity and temperature readings and you may not even know it unless you're actually comparing them to other devices when they're both on okay a few more probes to keep mapping so we have the uh, pressure probes for the refrigerant these are high and low pressure so first time it comes up this one is going to be assigned to the high pressure so then we'll write high pressure on that and that'll keep track of which line set that goes on and we'll do it again for the second one so that's high pressure and uh, the next one I bet would be low pressure so there you go we have both high and low pressure on we will document those on the devices we've done all the others and we'll keep moving on okay the next are the clamps for the liquid line and suction line so we turn it on and you should hear a beep the beep is because it actually is making continuity and you can see the difference between turning yellow or turning green in terms of actually making connection on the pipe so if you put it on the pipe and it's still turning yellow or you didn't hear the beep you need to make sure you clean the pipe okay so we've confirmed that this one is the liquid line temperature and we'll make sure we note that on the device okay we'll get the other pipe clamp on and uh, it also beeps uh, knowing that we have continuity everything is good and uh, now we'll determine that this is the suction line temperature and s LT we'll put on there and notice that there are again there are these little um, dip switches on the bottom and measure quick doesn't care about those it's all based on how you're mapping this tool in the toolbox okay so those are all labeled now we're moving on to the manometers these are our last two set of uh, handheld probes we've got so we turn it on and it shows up at the bottom and this is actually mapped to return external static pressure all right so then we'll map that down there and we'll do the other one so the other one will be supply external static pressure our app now includes illustrations as to where to install these whether it's a furnace or an air hander the next thing we're going to talk about is that these are actually the only probes that need to be zeroed the best time to zero them is you zero them when you place them on the unit and your static pressure probe is in the unit and the unit is off you just press the button quickly and it turns blue and then you can see that it is zeroed and then we're actually going to zero this in the app for the first time. So it's okay. This has been zeroed. 
And then uh, the only time you really need to zero it again is when you're actually using it on the appliance. You would zero it. And the best way to do that, again, is on the appliance, ready to go, no air moving through it, obviously, and then zero it. They're kind of susceptible to temperatures and other conditions. So we take the other manometer and we've zeroed it and we go to the app and we also zero it in the app, confirming that it's done. Okay, those are all ready. A couple of reminder about the manometers that they are hypersensitive to temperature, meaning that if you've left them in their truck at 100 degrees or 30 degrees that you bring them in, it takes them a while to get acclimated to the indoor temperatures. And as they're acclimating, they're also adjusting their pressure. Pressure and temperature clearly are part of our industry. So you want to make sure that you, as much as you can, get them to the temperature that you need indoors and then actually zero them and then begin reading. All right, our last is the electrical meter. You can use the Redfish meter. There's a separate video for that. Or you can use the Field Piece family and use their meter. There's a 480 and a 680. So we've turned them on. Some of them require you to press a button, the order units, to activate Bluetooth. And then we're going to map to electrical. And it's as simple as that. And then we can turn it back off, and it's ready to go. So we've got all of our probes on all nine of them, and the electrical meter are all mapped. And now we're ready to deploy the probes and actually begin testing. The other feature that's on the app is to hide unused probes. It actually eliminates any other probes that may be in the area from other technicians that are not mapped. Take a look at what's over on the right side of your probe manager. You can see that there's a green, yellow, or a red potentially um, Bluetooth icon. Green means you've had a, a recent uh, updates and in information. Yellow, it's only a few seconds old. Red means you've lost connectivity. Over on the left side, you can actually see that the battery health is actually listed besides other information that's on there. So there's a lot of great information that's in here about each one of the probes, what they're reading, what their measurements are, and um, their battery and uh, connectivity. Okay, you're going to upper left corner, hit the back button. It takes us back to the toolbox where all of your probes are. And um, if you have other probes that are on there or you want to add them, that's the place to do it. And then we're already back to our home or start screen. So that's the basic tutorial on how to add probes. Thanks for listening. Please contact us if you have any questions. Have a great day.